Well, Howard Griffith is joining us, BTN analyst. And Howard, I think you're in a really interesting position. And we talked about this when the schedule was released on Wednesday as well. You are someone who played this game at an extremely high level, up to it, including the Super Bowl. You're a former Big Ten student athlete, but you are also a parent of a current college football player, your son Houston, a defensive back for Notre Dame. So give us a sense from a parent's point of view. You're hearing, it sounds like, the educational institution saying, hey, we're not comfortable that this is safe for the student athletes. You're hearing a vocal group of student athletes saying, we are comfortable. You're hearing a few saying, we're not. As a parent, how do you process all this and try to make a decision in conjunction with your child? Well, it's a very difficult decision to make, right? And, and Reverend, as, as you're going to find out here pretty soon, when they get to 20, 21 years old, you know, they have minds of their own. Uh, they're set in their ways a little bit as far as what they want to be able to do. And, you know, Houston and his teammates have worked extremely hard, as have the rest of the young men and women around the country who are hoping that they were able to have a, a fall sport and it's starting to increasingly look like that's not going to happen. And you look at the movement that happened yesterday or late early this morning with the players that, that you know, we want to play. And now you see the coaches have also got into that. They're conditioned to do one thing, go straight ahead and go straight ahead fast and really compartmentalize everything that they're doing. But as a parent, you also have to look at, you know, what the numbers are saying and what else is going on, not just that, that one member institution, but the, the other institutions across college football. And the one thing that we've always talked about from the very beginning is COVID is in control of COVID. I mean, there are things that we can do and precautions that we can take, but at some point there's just probably too much risk and on the other side of it, too much liability if you're an institution that you may not want to go down that road. I think when you talk about higher learning, it's about putting uh, your students, not just your student athletes, in the best possible position you can for them to be educated as safely and as healthy as possible. And the way things look is just becoming uh, more difficult to be able to do that. And we'll just have to see probably in the next 24 to 48 hours what exactly is going to happen as far as some of our, our institutions go. Howard, we certainly know that if the season is to be canceled, were to be canceled, there would be a significant group of players, and it seems parents as well, who would speak out and say, hey, that's a decision that we need to make. So what do you think of that notion of saying, okay, you can play if you want to play, and you know, we have advised you against it, or we feel that there are liability issues that, that we're concerned about, there are long-term health issues that we don't know about, but if you're cognizant of those and you want to go forward, go for it. I mean, because you know that's what people are going to say, right? That's exactly what they're going to say. But I think also the parents and the people with all the information also have to, to make very unpopular decisions. And listen, I, I, I understand it. I get it. But if, you, if there's a chance that there's going to be some long-term health risks, which we don't know, and we saw last week with the the passionate post uh, by the Indiana mom uh, whose son was struggling for a couple of weeks there, uh, that this is real. And I understand you're driven and you want to go out there, but I think that's where the presidents, athletic directors, you know, have to be able to step in and, and make a decision that's going to be unpopular. I, I think that it is absolutely great that, that our young people are having a voice, right? But it's also unfortunate that that voice has to happen on Twitter, that they can't be able to speak their minds and, and be able to create more dialogue. And, you know, our commissioner, our new commissioner, Kevin Warren, has done an outstanding job. You've been on some of those coalition calls, Reverend. You know, we, we have some unbelievable student athletes. And, and I don't believe that, that other conferences don't have great student athletes as well when you start talking about their ability to be able to communicate their thoughts and, and just the way they're thinking. Our young people are going to be dynamic, and that's what we want. But they're also driven to, to play a sport to, to, and to continue to dream. And it's going to be very difficult under these circumstances right now. So I, I think in many cases, there's a shift that's got to happen. And I think that shift will start to, to happen this week as you start to have 
these student athletes start asking for and which they have and in some of the posts that you've shown, you know, what is the eligibility going to look like? What's the eligibility clock going to look like? What is what is the scholarship limit? These are questions that coaches are going to have as well. Do, are they going to go if they try to play in the spring? Do you go to 95 players or 125 players on the roster? Nobody knows. And the, the unfortunate part is that we see our universities and obviously are going to, without a season, are, are going to lose a substantial amount of money. But now if you're talking about uh, giving young people another year of eligibility, that is also going to be a, a huge uh, expense that, you know, I don't know that, that everyone across college athletics ha has really delved into that, that because there's been so much focus on trying to get us to the starting line and have a productive football season in the fall. But now that the shift has to happen and I think they'll start to look at, you know, what are the options at spring? But, you know, it's going to still be tough because there's still no guarantee that you can play 12 games, eight games, six games. And then what does that do for the upcoming year? So what I've been saying is that if you look, if you start to look at a spring model, you know, you to me, you're looking at adjusting college athletics the way it is, the way it was constructed last year you're maybe looking at two or three years before you can get it back to what it looks like last year. So is it worth that um, that headache and that stress that, that's going to go on? We'll have to see. And, and these athletic directors and presidents uh, will have to be nimble, will have to be able to adjust. And uh, those are some of the decisions that I think they're going to have to ultimately be able to make and be able to, to tell their coaches who can tell that to their players because players have a ton of questions at this point. Yeah, there is so much to unpack in what you just said. And I want to echo your sentiment of how impressive these young men and women are on the calls that you and I have been fortunate to be on with Commissioner Warren. You know, Jerry and you and I sit every year during the tour and we talk to student athletes. And I would say two or three times a year, right, we have a guy <laughs> leave the desk and we look at one another and say, that kid could be president one day, right? They're that yeah, impressive. Yeah. There are so many who are so good, and it's been one of the tremendous pleasures for me, and I know for you, of being in this job. Kevin Warren has done a really nice job of communicating. He had a Zoom call a week ago with 28 student athletes, one from every school uh, in football, and then one Olympic sport athlete from every school. So he has tried to keep the dialogue open, but you're right, I mean, the expense of, if you say we're guaranteeing another year of eligibility and you're bringing in another recruiting class, I mean, scholarships do cost right. A lot of money. This has been incredibly damaging financially for institutions. So there is a lot going on there. Ultimately, what do you say, Howard? Uh, last question for you. What do you say to your son when he says, Dad, what should I do? You, you've got to stay focused and, and really follow the protocol to this point. I, I think the decision of what you, you should do is going to be made by some people really quickly. So fortunately for the masses, they're not going to necessarily or in the families are not necessarily going to have that that really tough decision because it, it's really tough to tell a, a young person that you can't do something that you dream that you dreamt about that you've been working the last six months, particularly when you see your opportunity at stardom of having an opportunity to have a huge impact on your team now all of a sudden probably taken away. So it has to be a mental focus. And, and these these athletes, I mean, it, it's a reason that they've gotten to a certain point uh, in life where they've earned scholarships and they've, they've figured out how to do athletics and also be able to, to, to succeed in the classroom. They've got to be able to comp uh, compartmentalize is one of the things that I've been able to try to tell them. And you just have to to follow the process. I, I trust the people uh, in the Big Ten Conference. I tr trust the people at Notre Dame and, and what they've laid out. If you can follow the protocol, that that's what you have to be able to do. And it's difficult because, you know, you're, you're trying to be a young person and, and you want to have fun. But the other side of it is there's so much unknown with this horrible disease that you have to stay focused and stay committed. Uh, to me, stay committed to your protocol. And that's what it what you ultimately will have to do with all our student athletes and our students are going to have to do so that they can not only get back to campus, but get back to campus and flourish in the college experience. As you know, that's, you know, they talked about high school being the most fun you'd ever have in your life. But for me, 
you know, I tell people all the time, it's really about college and you talk about the relationships and experiences that you have a chance to share with so many other people and the people you come in contact with, but you want our young people to be safe. And that's the most important part so that they can get back to campus and really start to enjoy what the college experience is ultimately all about. No doubt, extremely well said. Howard, you and I should be rolling through Big Ten country on the bus right now, which has been one of the great no. pleasures of my life over the last dozen or so years. Uh, really sad that we are not, but always good to connect with you. Howard Griffith, thank yeah. you. I tease, I tease my, I tease my uh, family all the time. Is that it's about a three-week paid vacation for me. <laughs> <laughs> it is as enjoyable a time as you could yeah. possibly have, and, and I miss it. Yeah. Miss it dearly, and you're a big part of the reason why. Howard, thanks so much, my friend. All right. Stay safe, Reverend, and tell the family I say hello. You do the same.